What's going on, guys? Welcome to this very delayed episode of July's episode of Game of the Month, the show where we play, pick a game at random every month, and at the end of the month, we talk about it. My name's Seth. I'm Chevy. And I'm Chris. And uh, in July, we play Dragon Quest Builders 2, which we will be talking about shortly. But before that, we got to roll a new game for August. And uh, yeah, in August, we're going to play a game, and that's going to be randomly <laughs> rolled right now. You ready? Yep. All right, let's find out what we're playing in August alongside uh, our plus games. Fall Guys, and Modern Warfare 2 Remastered. Make sure to play those. Come back at the end of the month for Plus Club. And uh, we're going to talk about those as well. But as I'm hitting this generate button, it is 15. Earth Defense Force 5. Cool. So in August, we're going to be shooting bugs in cities and destroying buildings. Uh, that's a game that uh, we all picked up, or most of us picked up. Played it, liked it, and stopped playing it. So um, I'm actually pretty happy with that pick myself. It'll give me a reason to go back and finally put the work in on that game because they already announced that there's like, I think a voxel-based Earth Defense Force game coming out and a fucking and six. So That's crazy. They developed five and then uh, there was another like side. It's a Western-made one. Yeah, I never one played that it. It's like out. Heavy Rain or some shit. Steel Rain or I don't remember. <laughs> They must be selling a lot more copies of that than they used to. They have to be because they're just pumping them out now. So it's weird. But um, I'm stoked about it. What do you guys think about it? I mean, I bought it. So I'm looking forward to playing it. Uh, Like you said, we kind of like dabbled in it for a little bit. And I'm sure other games happened. So I need to clean this. (laughs) (laughs) I just looked at this. (laughs) Uh, EDF is like one of those games that your your friends introduced you to. And you guys are the friends that introduced me to that game and i just think it's it's fun but it's weird i mean yeah i'm not gonna disagree with that <laughs> so, i agree i just i'm excited to just play games with people so <laughs> right it's a perfect game for that i mean it's uh i i streamed it one time and literally everyone who came in was like seth what is this <laughs> and it's like three games that i've played ever where i got that response and every time that happens i'm like oh no i i gotta explain myself i don't like this like typically i play a game like oh what's this and i'm like blah blah, blah. But like seth what are you playing and i'm like is it really that fucking weird it's like when we're playing dragon's crown every came in like what the fuck is this and i'm like it's fun i swear stop judging me i know the characters look fucking crazy I agree. The game's fun. I promise. Same thing with this, except for there's a lot less um, awkward sitting on dragons in very scantily clad outfits. None of that in Earth Defense Force that I know of. Just a lot of singing and a lot of insects getting shot. And buildings collapsing. This is true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll be playing uh, EDF, uh, Earth Defense Force 5, in August. I am stoked for that. And... Yeah, um, like I said, uh, Modern Warfare 2 Remastered and Fall Guys are our games for August for PlayStation Plus. Make sure to download those, play those, come back at the end of the month. We're going to talk about those games. I want to thank everybody who joined the conversation on Reddit uh, talking about NBA 2K20 and Rise of the Tomb Raider. There is a third one. It's called Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So there's a whole trilogy of those games. We asked those questions. They got answered. And uh, it seemed like people on Reddit dug Tomb Raider, and I saw that. everybody was like, "I don't like sports." And I was like, "Man, I'm I'm weird because I'm I'm with you guys." But I was like, "The sports game's not too bad." And I was like, "I don't like it." I'm like, "I'm, I'm fair." So, but everybody's like, "I like Tomb Raider." I'm like, "Yeah, I wish I did. I feel like something's wrong with me." Um, but yeah, I want to thank everybody for that. And if you didn't get a chance to watch that episode, go back and watch that as well. We have Discord link down below. You can talk to us anytime, all the time. We're on iTunes, Spotify, and the podcast platforms if you prefer to listen to us. And uh, we have a Patreon link down below if you'd like to support the channel further than watching uh, the episodes all the way through every single episode. There's a lot of them. Watch every single one of them. That's a lot of support. And if you did that, you're an absolute king or queen. Thank you. Um, also, you know, liking, sharing, commenting, stuff like that. The link's down there, though, if you'd like to support the channel further than that. Uh, one thing I want to kind of bring up, too, and I'll do a tasty bit on it soon. Uh, there is uh, an impending uh, move that we're doing soon, so it may disrupt um, future episodes in August. Uh, so if something seems off, Taste Tuesday's delayed. I mean, that's been happening a lot anyway. 2020's been kind of shit, um, as all of you know. Uh we will most likely be moving in the next month. So it's going to uh, make certain things 
a little more difficult, specifically shooting on the set that, as you can see, I'm deconstructing now. So uh, you're probably going to be getting more episodes from my room, which I don't enjoy doing as much as out here. But you guys understand, and I hope you will understand in the next month as we transition into a new place. And I will make the next set even better, even cooler. It's going to be awesome. So just want to let you guys know that uh, things might be off in August a bit. So, uh, yeah. Um, all right. So... Game of the month, we played Dragon Quest Builders 2. If you didn't get a chance to play that, it's a Dragon Quest game. Uh, you also build in it. It's the second one of these, and it kind of takes after, I would argue more so, JRPGs with um, an emphasis on a little bit of Minecraft building and uh, gathering and crafting. Um, it's easy to look at the game and go, oh, it's a Minecraft type game, and a lot of games probably would be like that, but this one really, I think... It's trying to be a JRPG first. Um, in it, you go to random islands, you talk to random people, you build towns for them, you do objectives for them, you gain more people in those towns, uh, you fight monsters, uh, waves of monsters come to your town, you have to defend it while crafting things and getting the people in your town to start crafting things for you and baking bread and all sorts of shit. Um, and it's, uh, it's very blocky while also having a little chubby people in it. We all played it. I believe Chris played the demo version. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, demo. yeah. So I just want to make that clear so people know, but you still played it. Um, and yeah, uh, let's start with Chris just because I want to know. I don't. I have no context on what the demo had or whatever. So um, so I played it on the demo on PC. Mm -hmm. um, and it's called like the, the giant or jumbo demo. It literally is like a shit ton of the game. Um, I played all the way up through the farm island of the game oh nice um so you get to, you, if, if anybody's interested just heads up ahead of time play the demo before you buy it if you want to see what it's like um but this is that's uh, cool to even have a demo for it i mean like it's massive yeah it's a massive demo too like i didn't feel restricted at all playing it it was great that's awesome um so this is a, a akira toriyama right does the art style yeah the art style is, yeah, yeah the art style Playing this game is entertaining because going into it, I was thinking this is going to be kind of Minecrafty, kind of not, which is pretty much what it is. It's it's more like you said, an RPG focused than my, uh, Minecrafty, but there are strong Minecraft elements to it. But I couldn't get over the art style the whole time. I felt like I've never I've never played a Dragon Quest game before, so oh, the shit. characters I know of like the character, like I know of the slime being like kind of like the mascot character. And kind of like what the golems look like and some of the monsters here and there. But for the most part, none of this really resonated me on like a nostalgia factor. Mm -hmm. um, but the whole time I felt like I was just running around as Goku. And I get that that's the style, but it's such a such an ingrained style for the anime that when they use that style for other things, it just feels like I'm playing a weird offbeat Dragon Ball Z game. Did you play Chrono Trigger? No. Oh. And was it Tobol... <laughs> seven or nine or something like that it was a game for playstation he did the art he's done the art style for a couple things and mm -hmm. the thing i like about it but also understand where you're coming from 100 percent, is that akira toriyama's art style is like definitive it's like mm -hmm. one of the most famous art styles i think in any cartoon ever outside of it, like the simpsons um so when you see what he draws just like matt graining what he draws y you know who drew it and that's yeah. it's so indicative of him, and, and in a way, I like it because it kind of celebrates his art style. But I have to agree that I get, I as a person who has played a lot of the games that he's designed characters for, I've always thought there was a neat element to it. But I also, it, it sucks seeing Trunks in every game, and Gohan <laughs> in every game, and like there's <laughs> and Mr. Satan. You see him in every fucking game. Like there's a big buff guy that looks just like Mr. Satan. I'm like. You can't come up with other designs. Maybe it's a little tough. I don't know. Like, you know, in the yeah. newer Dragon Ball series, there's blue hair now. That's different. But other than that, it's like everything looks pretty much the same. I mean, silver and black. Yeah, exactly. And so... <laughs> even, for any, even the hero from Dragon Quest Eleven is trunks with brown hair. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. I mean, not in his character, but the way he's designed for sure. Right. The design. Yeah. yeah. Um, And so... And for any purists out there who just are in love with the art style, I like it too. I, I mean, I'm not... This isn't a complaint. It's just an observation. <laughs> and... I'm on both sides of it. I like it a lot. I see it. I feel like at home when I see like Akira Toriyama's art style at anything, I'm like, oh yeah. But I'm never going to look at, at a character in a game where he's designed the characters and like really see something 
unique in the sense of like, I don't know, you look at Geralt and like, you're like, that's Geralt. He talks a certain way. He looks a specific way. His characteristics kind of build him up as a character. And you can build up character all day for these characters in a lot of the games that Kyoto Yama's designed. But there is like, you know, anime cliches and they look like all the characters we've seen in all the Dragon Ball series. So even though the games are always fun, charming, and great, and I love them uh, typically, um, th- there's never like a resonance. There's nothing that ever sticks with me when it comes to yeah, characters. Yeah, there's never a hard aesthetic appeal outside of like, oh, this is the Kira Toriyama stuff. Yeah, because I love, of- love Dragon, Dragon Quest Eleven. I loved it. It's one of my favorite JRPGs. The main character is a blank slate. He exists yep. to be the hero, and that's it. Yep. The other characters yep. are interesting, but they all kind of you know look like other characters from they other things. They still kind of blend together with other characters from yeah. other anime or from Dragon Ball. It seems like I'll say Dra- Dragon Quest is also like their very like safe series. They never deviate too much. So mm. well, there's there's a charm to Dragon Quest that I like. It's it's fun. It's charming as fuck. It's got a familiar art style that's colorful and vibrant, but it also allows it to, itself to be dark, kind of like Dragon Ball mm-hmm. uh, in Dragon Ball Z. Um, mm. which is an interesting parallel. So I think it kind of has a lot for everybody. I think that's why people enjoy it so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I mean, beyond the art style, though, um, the gameplay itself is really fun. Uh, it kind of pops off my OCD here and there of I need everything neat and clean and tidy. But what really, really stands out for me from this game, apart from like Minecraft, is the the grid system in which you build everything. In that if you build whatever shape you want with a fence and you put a gate on it that will become if you till it will become a garden mm-hmm. regardless of how big it is how small it is how much you add to it how much you whatever you could shape it like a, a penis for all you wanted to and it would still be a garden you heard it here or, chris likes penis <laughs> gardens <laughs> not um, a stretch or any kind of like housing structure if you as long as you add the right types of furniture to it it becomes different housing, which I think is a really neat concept. It like, whereas like Minecraft, you kind of have like this like free range of like kind of build whatever you want. It doesn't matter, but it doesn't really take on like this like locked in grid, which I find really appealing of like, okay, I want to build this. I know exactly what I need to do, what shape I need to do or what structures I want to add to it. Um, it just, it's kind of like that little cookie, like, oh, you did it right. Here's a cookie. It kind of glimmers and everybody's like, that's great. That looks wonderful. Congratulations. Oh, this whole game, everyone's just running up to you going. <laughs> They're like, like yeah like just stoked and shit i will say though the controls on pc feel like an afterthought it definitely feels like it was designed to be a console game japanese games Um. dude it's it's not all of them but it's more common i've noticed yeah Yeah, for sure it's gotten better but i'm not surprised by that I just remember trying to load up the game initially and like kind of figure out the controls and feeling very like out of place and kind of wonky and like weird with the camera angles, Mm -hmm. which I had a big problem with the camera constantly. Like if I was talking to someone and the camera panned over, it would zoom all the way in because of the barriers of the ground or the walls or whatever. And then it would be stuck there and I have to wiggle my character back and forth to get the camera to zoom back out all the way. I don't think I experienced that. That didn't happen to me either. Yeah. 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 And for the record, he played on PC. We played on PS4. Yeah. I played it on Pro, you played it on standard PS4, yep. so just that info's out there. But, I mean, the worlds are massive, and you can literally gather anything that you mm-hmm. see in the map, even other structures from other buildings. You can just, if you have the right tools, you can just take it all, and it doesn't break down like the buildings. You literally just cut out pieces, and you can reconstruct it elsewhere, which is really nice. You don't, like, lose, like like in Minecraft, if you break something down, you have to break it down to the essentials again, have to rebuild it from there. It's just a flat item that you could just place this is one of the things that i think it differentiates itself from other games like this is a jrpg first because it does it's not a survival game this game's not trying to make you micromanage um every little thing so you have to rebuild from scratch and like you have like an infinite inventory at, at early on in the game they're like you have a bag you fit everything in so the game's not worried about like you need to work hard to work your way up and survive this it's just like Oh, it's a JRPG, but you can also do all the things you can do in a Minecraft type game. And we're going to get really creative on our quest types using that system. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, it's it's interesting. So when I first started playing it, I went into it thinking like Conan Exiles, Minecraft. I mean, any kind of these type types of games arc. I got to, you know, really be strategic on certain things. For the most part, you don't. 
Um, the only no. thing you got to really think about is when, you know, the random enemy waves come attack your town. It's smart sometimes to have a barrier or something kind of ready. Or a moat. Or a moat or something <laughs> kind of just prepared for when that happens. So it you know, mitigates the damage there's coming in to try and do. But um, mm -hmm. th there's so much gaminess to this. Even when you're talking about uh, building um, a garden or when you build any structure in this game, if you put a door on it and meet certain parameters that the game is set, It'll tell you, like, this is a small room, and it goes, Ding! and just kind of, like, glows, and people come going, yay, and everything <laughs> you do, they drop hearts, and you run around and collect them like you're playing, like, a Lego game. Throw a and, towel uh, and a pot in there, now it's a toilet. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. You make, like, a small room, a put a pot in there, it turns into a bathroom, um, and people stand in a line going, <laughs> um, and then you can get, what's it called, night soil? Night soil out of the pot. Out yeah. of the pot. We can all guess what that is. Um, and stuff like that I love, but uh, but I, I like the the game structure of it. You're playing a video game and it's and it's got parameters and mechanics that are not it's not a sand, it's a sandbox in some regards, but it's also a game that you need to progress through that has objectives Heavily that has objective quests yeah. and I like the structure. So kind of going to my impressions there but i you know you keep bringing up points i'm like exactly that's a, i mean i agree <laughs> and even like when you're working in the villages say like the farming land for example once you set down initial crops the villagers will take over for you you don't mm -hmm. have to sit there and micromanage it it's really nice so they'll even like pick it up and put it in certain chests for you if you have like started like put one like cabbage in one chest they will continue to put cabbages in that chest and then if you have one set up to like a cooking station design they'll cook food and they'll eat they all gather around for every morning to eat at tables stuff like that they all wait their turn to eat their cabbages for the rest of their life yeah they love it too they all <laughs> will be like farming and all of a sudden all at once they're like all oh, right food time and they'll just like turn around and just rush to the building and i'm like and then they're all just like waiting at the box, grab stuff. They'll run out to the tables, just chomping down. I'm like, say, these are simple people. That village in the the town that you got to play in, mm -hmm. uh, I built a two story, effectively a hostel, and uh, <laughs> everyone slept in this two story building. And there's just straw beds everywhere, and it actually calls it like a, a community bedroom or something like that when you put enough. Yeah, beds he hooked down. it up. I didn't do that at all. They're all <laughs> sleeping everywhere. And, uh, so, but they'd all wake up, stretch, and all of a sudden they're like, all right, food time. They'd run downstairs, go, they'd all get into the chest, they'd run to the table, and then they'd all run to the toilet. <laughs> that cabbage goes right through you. Um, they like that morning cleanse. Um, I love too in the middle of the night when like all your town people are sleeping and you complete a mission and the person that was like, part of that quest just wakes up gets up and runs out the front door into the night runs up and like hey you did it i'm like what you fucking <laughs> sleeping wait till tomorrow you can talk to me then or if you're harvesting something a random villager will wake up and be like yeah let's run out <laughs> I'm like, can you feel that in the wind did you know like how how the fuck are you here <laughs> my cabbage senses were tingling <laughs> i feel more cabbage <laughs> Uh, the only thing that I, I, I have a gripe with it is that the multiplayer is not accessible early on. It, it takes forever you gotta earn to it. access the multiplayer. Yeah, I've beaten games in less time than it is to get to that <laughs> multiplayer. I'm still, for the record, I made uh, uh, an objective for myself to get to the multiplayer so we could talk about it. I didn't get there. Chevy did. I didn't. I'm right there. I'm like right there to unlock the multiplayer. I haven't done it. So I do plan on still doing it though. And then we'll play it. And I want to talk about it on Taste Cast because that's something I wasn't doing that just for the show. I wanted to talk about it for the show. But um, I do. I want to try out the multiplayer. So yeah. at some point we'll do that and we'll talk about it. But it is. I respect it, but don't like it also. At the same yeah. time, I like it's, it and don't like it. It's I'm, deep in there too. I'm like, that's cool. I like this idea that like. This is a JRPG. You need to play the single player JRPG, but guess what? There's multiplayer too. You can earn that. I kind of like that. It is it is super reminiscent of of the genre though because like most JRPGs like you just never stop unlocking features. It, yeah. You just keep playing. Yeah, it's like, like a here's a new thing later. to do. I'm like I'm like 50 hours in this game. Yeah. So. Yeah, that is true. But uh you know, coming from the first game into this one, the first one didn't have multiplayer. And that was the first thing I was like, this doesn't have multiplayer. Like, this needs multiplayer. And then it got addressed, and they're like, we're not doing that. And then they made the second one. They're like, oh, this one has multiplayer, though. And I'm like, oh, dope. That's awesome. And then I play the game. I'm like, where is it? Oh, you got to play for like 20 hours. 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> at least. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get there eventually. Hopefully the game single player is good enough. Many good things about the multiplayer either. Just kind of weird, like you're on someone else's island and yeah. you can only interact with their things and it doesn't affect your game or your player and you can co-op on islands. It's just kind of you're just hopping in someone else's game. Kind of sounds but, like Animal know. Crossing. Yeah, where you just hang out. Mm-hmm. Like um, you're just visiting their island, checking it out. You I, st- the, I still wanted to play it so we could talk about it. Yeah, but you're, you're not in the demo, right? So you don't have... Uh, or you're in the demo, so you didn't get pe- past that that island, right? That it ends there. Uh, I don't know how far the demo goes because I just stopped playing at some point. Oh, I I have a feeling it probably stops at the end of that island. Um, I would assume probably when you complete that island's objective. Mm-hmm. After that, you go to another area. I'm gonna be vague. Um, Isle of Awakening. We can go to the Island of Awakening, <laughs> and uh, place, yeah, <laughs> it is for you. That's what that place is for. Um, and that's also where the multiplayer portal eventually unlocks. And so, uh, it is very much like go to someone else's place. And in the one place that you're essentially, you get full creative sandbox mode in, um, that's the multiplayer. So otherwise it's Mm. story-based hubs Hmm. or gathering hubs. So with really good perks, um, like on the small islands, they give you a, uh, oh, what's that called? When you do like scavenger hunts and stuff like that. That's pretty much a scavenger hunt list. And if you find everything in a section, in the top left of the, the category, there'll be an icon for material. If you finish that scavenger hunt, you get unlimited of that for building for the rest of the game. So you don't have to go gather it anymore. Oh. Yeah. Which is kind of neat because it gives you these like little if you're a completionist you can just build whatever the hell you want well and you get to a point like i don't want to cut down any more trees man yeah and the game's like here you go infinite wood yeah and again that's another like gamey yeah. aspect to yeah. it that i dig mm. so yeah hmm. so it's like Neat. not a survival game no no no. it's literally like this is a feature you can unlock yeah it's so weird that to me that if that's how the game multiplayer is that you just kind of visit other people's stuff like you basically have creative mode in minecraft that you can't co-op build a world in it just seems weird to me yeah I mean, well the first game didn't have multiplayer so um yeah. first one was missed opportunities and this one sounds like a step in the right direction but also missed opportunities so if we're following the trajectory correctly i would assume the third one might have a multiplayer that we might like possibly Maybe. Maybe haven't, know. haven't tried it though so we haven't played really it so we don't know it. yeah, yeah. Right. i, I right. would be more comfortable talking about it if i've actually played it so it's it's fun it's fun but it's it's just dragon ball z builders <laughs> to me even the even the what's the guy the the black haired guy that runs around with you the angry one your edgy friend Mal- the edgy friend is yeah, Mal- Malroth. Huh? Malroth. Malroth. Yeah. that's just super saiyan goku 4 from dragon ball z gt that's all he is to me he's angry vegeta monkey man <laughs> I mean, you're, um, you're kind of right why am i remembering all the names <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember shit. Yeah. Anything else? No, no. I could probably fill up an episode. Yeah, I'll I'll try to keep it short because I pretty much kind of elaborate on some stuff I'm already thinking. But um, my impressions of this game, just I always kind of like to give some back reference to add context to stuff. So I uh, played the first one a little bit. I liked where they went with it. I liked some of the ideas, but at the same time, it didn't really seem too compelling for me to want to play. So it's one of those games I was like, you know, once they add a couple more features, uh, maybe this will be a game I'll, I'll be really into. But I, I didn't dislike the first game. In fact, I liked it. I just not enough for me to want to stick around and play it too too long. But um, so when this game got announced and they said the multiplayer is coming out and blah, 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 I was like, oh, like a, it's like day one buy. I'm excited. That's what I wanted from the first one. And uh, played it a little bit when it first came out, but I kind of, you know, like every game, uh, hopped to something else and never came back. It wasn't compelling enough to get me to come back. Obviously, this month happened, so I'm playing it. And I went pretty hard on it early in the month. I mean, I probably put 20 or 30 hours in this game, and uh, which is more than I typically put in a lot of the, sh- uh, the games we play for the show. And uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm not in love with the game. I'm I'm definitely not in love with it in the same way I'm in love with just Dragon Quest Eleven, which I just I just absolutely loved. Uh, once it was over, I, di- I was upset. Like there's some games I'll beat. And I'm like, the fuck do I do now with my life? Like it's over. <laughs> like it's just 
I don't want to replay it. The story's over, but what do I do now? Like, are we done? Yeah. Um, that shit sucks. And, you know, some people think the same with, like, books and stuff like that, too. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you understand where it comes from. Um, so I, I love that game. Coming to this, though, it's got that Dragon Quest charm, and I love that. Um, there's this, you know, the, the art style aside, um, which is definitely, you know, very familiar. Um, there still is this... Um, um, this essence of Dragon Quest, this fantasy, uh, fun, charming, adventurous feeling that you get from Dragon Quest. And this game has that as soon as you start it. It's got the music you expect. And that's one thing I kind of like about Dragon Quest games in general is like Final Fantasy. There's all these things that you expect from it that's in the other games while also new things. So like the songs you're going to be familiar with, the art style you're going to be familiar with, uh, the enemy types are like, you know, famous in Dragon Quest, the slimes. Like oh, the skeletons, they're all super goofy looking. The they chubby all look like dragons. They all look like Dragon Ball, not Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball anything after that, but Dragon Ball stuff. Where yeah. you look at like a big dinosaur looks goofy as hell, but you know someone's like scared running from it, and you're like, I think stupid as hell looking in a good way. Um, this game is just like that. Anything that's like threatening is just like this chubby guy with a mask on, or like you know just something ridiculous looking. Um, there's also these rats everywhere, and I just love them. There's like, when I get hungry, I get ratty. And they're just like standing like this. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? You're a rat. Like, come at me, bro. Yeah, they're just like pissed looking. Like, and they're just telling me when I get hungry, I get ratty. I'm like, I bet. You're a rat. Um, another guy too was like, all this work's making me ratty. And I'm like, why, why you guys, this is like the topic you guys have to talk about. That's all you guys talk about is being ratty. You're a fucking rat. Um, I love that. Um I like the mission structure. I like one thing, one thing though, and you kind of experienced this as well. It, it's not a sandbox, but when you play it, you kind of think about it like a sandbox. So I was adventuring around doing all sorts of shit. I was running into things. I was like, what's this for? And the game hadn't revealed it yet. Or I did something early on. Like I built a sword. I tried to give it to a character and they're like, I don't want that. I want a stick. And I'm like, okay. And I give them a stick. They're like, oh, this is nice. Then later they're like, man, be great if I had a sword. I'm like, I gave you a fucking sword earlier. You're like, I don't want that. I want a stick. And that was just the game had not got to the point in the story. Yeah. And it's not even like a, a complaint. It's just funny to me that I was like, here's a sword. And they're like, I don't want that. I want a stick. I'm like, what the fuck? Okay, here's a stick. Later, they're like, hey, I want a sword. And I'm like, dude. That Brittany? Dude, yeah. Yeah. I was like, dude, are you fucking serious? I, I, you're lucky I still have this sword because <laughs> I, you didn't want it. Um, but uh, I hate how she's like a valley girl too. Like your village gets attacked. She's like, like I'm totally going in. And she yeah. just runs at him. I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, and that, that goofy <laughs> essence, that goofy atmosphere, something that I find just so charming about these games. There's there's something at stake, but it's like also just like a a, a fun world to be in, mm. um, which I dig. Uh, but yeah, so I'm playing this game like a sandbox game. I'll typically you know be looking for all the resources to build, whatever. And there's not even a hard emphasis on that. I typically, when I go to craft something, already have all the items already. I almost never have to go foraging for that shit. Because I've just picked them up as I went along the way. Whereas a lot of games like this, not like this, but you know what I'm saying. Um, I would have to go looking for that shit. Or if I need to build another one, I'm gonna. I'm, I barely had enough to build it the first time. So this game's not like that. Um, but uh, I had to kind of go back. Sometimes you'll, sometimes they'll give you like three quests, and it's like you got to do all three of these. And I'm like, do I pick which one I go on? And I'll go to do one, and I'm like, I don't understand where it's at. And I do another quest, and it's like, oh, hey, there's a dude over by the lake who said blah, 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 blah. And I go over there, and that's the other quest I was trying to find and do. So you got to let the game guide you. Mm -hmm. This is a guided, linear experience with sandbox elements. That's why I really emphasize it's a JRPG. Um, just like Final Fantasy XIV to me. It's like more of a JRPG than MO, but it absolutely is an MMO. Absolutely. It's just a lot of these games have like these guided story-based structures that they're trying to... They want you to follow the way they want you to play to a certain extent. Freedom's at the end. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and I, I like that because all the other games do what I expect. And I like that as well. But, you know, this is doing something different I like. Um, Gameplay is simple, um, which is great. Uh, a little personal, but there's a week where I was having like random panic attacks a lot. And I was feeling like shit. You know, the, just the stress of the fucking world and everything. Just kind of building up. And I was just like not having a good week. Work sucked. Blah, 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 blah. And this game just was so nice to just play. It's it's like you're achieving stuff, you're you're getting stuff, you're working towards things. But it's it's I'm not playing Dark Souls, I'm not playing Hunt, 
I'm not playing a fighting game. Like, it's just like you and some chubby boys and girls just run around fighting stuff with real simple, basic uh, moves. And you unlock more as you play the game. Um, and just doing these, like, simple quests. We're like, hey, build build a bathroom for me. Hey, build a bakery for us. Uh, oh, go save this person. Go gather that. And it's, it's just like, you know, I always like to emphasize. There's re- Some people are, like, genre people. And some people are, like, I only like hardcore games or, like, indie games. And I respect that if you're that kind of person. Um, but I think there's room sometimes for just, like, some chill fucking games. Some games you can just kick back and just kind of enjoy. And I think this game does a really good job at that. I usually um, mostly want that. Every once in a while, like, I want to sit down and play something hard. But, like, you, you do. Which is interesting you mentioned that because someone on Reddit asked about you. Yeah. They're like, does Chevy like video games? He always seems like he's not really too into stuff. <laughs> I'm like, Chevy likes certain games quite a bit. Like, I was like, watch our most viewed si- or uh, viewed video on, on the YouTube channel. Yeah. Cyberpunk, he was just ex- as excited about the game as me. Yeah. Um, uh, boy, I'm not good at... Well, ex- I I'm not that. expressive. Yeah, yeah, I explained that. But uh, <laughs> but I was like, he likes MMOs. He likes JRPGs for sure. You know, he gets enthusiastic about some fighting games. Like... And uh, I was just explaining, like, you know, he, he definitely is into certain things, but he's also, like, certain games. Like, I also explained that you don't get super positive about shit, but also not super negative about shit either. Mm-hmm. So I just thought it was funny. He's like, does he like things? I'm like, yeah, he likes them. He's just not fucking going, <laughs> yes. I'm used to this. Yeah. But um, <laughs> are you even happy? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. You're <laughs> being so blase about everything, Chevy. God. Sorry. Yeah, he's like, you know, he, you know, that's fine if he's like more of like a voyeur or whatever. I'm like, no, he plays game. He plays 14 all the fucking time. Like, he's obviously into that. So he's not sitting there going, hey, can you play 14 for me? So. I watched the trailer for the patch like at least 10 times. I'm very much looking forward to the 11th. Yeah, <laughs> like, for sure. Um, <laughs> random, random thing. A lot of random things in this episode, but I thought that was a fun question. Yeah. Or not, not, it was a question. He was talking about his impressions on games too, which yeah. I thought were really uh well put but then he asked about it. he was like i put more work into that explaining that than the rest of the comment um so yeah anyway um i don't even remember what the fuck i was talking about at this point uh dragon quest builders chill game to chill game um oh yeah and because when i think of games that you might be into um and he said the same thing he's like you know i get it if he's like you know anxious and doesn't like you know you know excitable games i guess that's my words not his but pretty much the essence of what he's saying that is something I thought about. I'm like, yeah, Sherry does more like games that he can like invest in. You're definitely into a game that you can put time into, but you also like games that are a little more um, casually paced, not casual difficulty. You're definitely playing harder stuff in MMOs, but um, something that there's like the opposite of Dark Souls, where you start the game up, you load in, and you take 10 steps forward, and things are going to try and murder you, and you got to yeah. like try and kill them. And- For sure. Uh, like, there is no like relaxing downtime. In I enjoy game. playing playing uh, Code Vein, but I can't play it by myself. Yeah, so. for sure. Um, so yeah, chill game. I really appreciate that, and uh, it's it's a game that it's it's so easy to sink hours into just because there's so many little minimal tasks to do that all lead towards things. But there's also a story, and the whole experience is just it's just nice. It's just fun, charming. I keep using that word, but Games like this have have that just fun factor to them that I enjoy. So um, all in all, I enjoyed playing this game. I will continue to play it after this month. And yeah, what are your impressions? Uh, well, I adore this game, to be honest. It is... See, so he likes games. <laughs> JRPGs. Um, it is, it, like you said, it's an extremely charming game. It has a simple but also willing to punish you uh, uh, in combat, specifically when you're defending your town, because they'll... If you, if you don't have a good enough defense, they will come and wreck your town, and you have to rebuild the whole thing. Yeah, when you build structure, structures in that game, just recognize that they can get destroyed. Yeah, That's one reason. That's something I didn't mention real quick. Games like this, anyone who knows me, when I play any game they can build, I go fucking nuts. And I just start building and building. I'm like, I'm going to build an empire. And I just don't have enough time for that. But I try. Uh, this, I was like, I'm not doing this in this. I'm just going <laughs> to, you want a bathroom? I'll make you one real quick. And I, I didn't make it nice and fancy or whatever. I was like, there you go. And then the old house, I'm like, okay, I'll put a door on it. Uh, like Chevy put beds everywhere. I'm like, no, you guys you guys are sleeping just fine. You guys don't need beds. I if you a, need them, I'll build them. I had a two-story building where the bottom was the, uh, I guess, I think they used it, that it was a, a barn. Uh, but it's essentially mm-hmm. like a warehouse. And then on the top upstairs was where the kitchen was. So the person would go down, you know, where the, all the 
storage was they'd come up and they'd cook and they'd go put it back away and stuff and yeah i i definitely uh spent a little more time on it uh, yeah you had like an apartment complex you made well yeah on like, the other like, island oh the island of awakening yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i made it's essentially Lord it, dragon quest chevy over here it, it's like a motel it, yeah it looked like a motel like what? a sleazy ass motel and then across <laughs> this like river or wherever the hell there was a bathroom and you're trying to make four different bathrooms to get more people in there. And they all just lined up one at a time and one would enter and use it. And the rest of them were just out there going. Ooh. Yeah, unfortunately, you have to have a door for every toilet. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they off. yeah, your setup, I wouldn't have even went in that bathroom. Because, like, you had four <laughs> toilets, which are just pots. And then you had curtains. Just four of them. So, like, you're sitting across from somebody just divided by fabric. I'm like, fuck that, dude. I can barely go into <laughs> dude, a public bathroom. I say, if you're standing in there, they don't care. So, <laughs> they don't. I do. Um, I even like, and then across the, the water completely, I have four proper like farms that I've got set up there now. And, um, but yeah, anyways, I, I put a lot of time into the game. I, I, I uh, just unlocked a multiplayer and I kind of did a little bit of exploring on the, the micro islands, which is how I discovered you can do these little like checklists and unlock infinite resources, which when I got wood was a huge game changer for building stuff on the Island of Awakening because now I can just make wood structures without cutting trees down. So it's interesting how they mixed essentially creative mode that you have to earn. Yeah into a story based the the one thing too i want to give this game credit for is there have been a couple games minecraft tried it that made a sandbox building game survival game that tried to add structure to it later mm. and this game started with the structure mm. and has the minecraft stuff and they've done it better than any of those games oh for it sure it feels like a game well, when you play it and that's probably one of my favorite things about it is like when you first start the game you only get like a couple quests but mm. eventually like people are just like do this thing for me. Everybody. You end up with a list of things to do. Hours slip by. Like yep. you're just busy. And then the the game also. You They're know, not super difficult tasks. They just keep you busy. Well, They're and fun. you do a lot of traveling when you do it. And yeah. it does have quick travel. So you don't have to like walk across the entire map constantly. Oh my God. Okay. So when I first played this game, I probably did the tutorial then. And I was like, oh yeah, I get it. And I played it. And that, I barely remember the states. That's the old me. But coming back this month this last month in july uh i forgot we're in august already um i forgot some of the buttons i was playing my old save so i started playing it i probably got everything down and i was playing it and like you know 20 30 hours into the game a couple like a week or two later i go out i'm watching chevy play and he's running doing the naruto run just through fucking fields and shit and i was like there's a fucking run and he's like yeah he just and he's like shows him I'm like god damn it because i've just been like running through you can fast travel it's not a big deal but like i was like you're cruising you're going like yeah. 40 miles per hour yeah you run fast yeah that's and crazy then after you you beat the first island you get a glider so i don't have that yet. i don't want that <laughs> i want that glider um the so yeah you have all these objectives to do um and the biomes are pretty interesting and every island has a different biome um which eventually turns you know more materials to bring back to the island of awakening to build your ideal place um and it, they have these little contained stories that are also part of this overarching story of it's very basic. Like in the first game, no one remember how to build. And all of a sudden, like you woke up and you were like the one builder. And so, uh, you know, <clears throat> this game builders exist, but there's been like uh, a stigma against them that say they like, make people believe that you're evil. And so like the builders get ratted out and they go to prison and stuff like that. So uh, you're out in the world always smiling which they comment on constantly you're, you're a witcher dude and uh you're a horse and people are like horses working magic like i thought you were supposed to be evil you're pretty awesome so they say the same thing to Geralt. <laughs> uh this is the witcher there's a good emphasis on exploration witcher. uh there are secret items that you can find there are secret bosses you can find those bosses will drop materials and stuff too um and there's some dudes they run to and at first they'll kick your ass and then you come back and fight them kill them later and i love that kind of shit well there's like a centipede boss and after you yeah he's a bitch i hate it when him. you beat him you get a uh, rapier that poisons or no no not poisons has a chance for instant death that thing's amazing so it's fucked up. <laughs> um and then there's an orc boss that you can get uh no no i'm sorry it was a crab boss and after you beat him you get uh 
turtle shell armor, so you look like you're in a turtle. I shell. saw you wearing that. I was very jealous. Yeah. And so you become Master Roshi, with, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, I was running around as Master Roshi with a rapier. So except for it was a full <laughs> bodysuit, but yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, like you know, you said the the game, like visually, it's it's confusing because like everything's goofy. I'm running around in a turtle shell, for example, but then like. People are dying, and there's things at stake. The game starts with people just face down in the water after a shipwreck. Yeah, and you bury the bodies. Yeah, and I was like, or you push them back out to sea. I was like, God they damn! They just wash out. The tide takes them. This is the tide takes them back out to sea. Yeah, I was like, this is fucking dark, yeah. man. This is that shit started similar to goddamn Divinity: Original Sin too. Um, the one thing I, I I like about this game more than the first one uh, oh, is what real quick. Yeah. You wore the turtle thing. I built the sauna, and they gave me a towel. I just wrap that fuck around yeah. my little dude. He's had a little little belly. And you just stand there, just stoke looking, and it's like a little towel. <laughs> I was running around doing missions with that. I was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I love this shit. Um, hey, what were you saying? No, so the the first village in the original game, um, you just you build up a village, and eventually you get uh, a boss fight against a giant golem, and that's that's pretty much it. That's the story in that one. In this one, there's this massive structure that you're part of a building and it's just so much like more grand than, yeah. than the first game in that regard. And I saw that. I was like, Ooh, man, they, they definitely wanted this game to show off a little more. So the first game almost feels like a proof of concept. hundred percent. And the second game feels like what the game should be. Yeah. Cause um, they need to make the multiplayer a little more enticing, I guess for sure. I also like the companion system. Uh, Malroth is a neat addition, especially because he's more combat centric and you're a builder. You can fight, but you don't do as much damage as he does. I think he's essentially part of your combat. Like you have yeah. to equip stuff onto him that you can't equip on you. Yeah, he's you. Yeah. yeah. And when you start like uh, digging stuff up or grabbing shit, he'll start running and grabbing the same item. Oh, did you smash mm -hmm. a tree? And he's like, we're smashing trees. Dude, I was in a building. I broke <laughs> one block and he just like looked at the wall, ran over and started breaking stuff and they ran upstairs and i hear just breaking shit and i'm mm -hmm. like this guy's ready to destroy this building he's ready to, well he's never mind <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it is in the title um so yeah uh, i also appreciate that after putting as much time as i have in the game and having an idea of how many islands there are in the game it's not a short game you're getting your money's worth um and if you even remotely I, this is suggestion territory i shouldn't go too into that but I'll say definitely um, not only has JRPG vibes, but combat is very akin to like a Legend of Zelda game. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. And you kind of get that as well with like the exploring the set maps. Um, I don't know. I just overall, I think it's a fun game. It's really easy to like just play and then forget what time it is and go, oh, my God, why am I still awake? So um, yep. I did that like two nights in a row and I did not get a lot of sleep. So. Yeah, overall, I uh, definitely enjoyed this game. Yeah. Anything else you guys want to say impressions-wise? No. Uh, let's jump into recommendations. I started the last couple times, so uh, Chris, what, what recommendations would you recommend this to? Well, outside of the obvious, like, people are looking to play something kind of like Minecraft, but it's, it's Minecraft adjacent, I think is how I would put it. Um, I think a lot of people can play this game, um, but my weird normal recommendations for kids would be I would shy away from younger kids playing this just because there is a lot of like darker elements to this um, that are kind of hidden within like the nice fun kitty looking atmosphere. I mean, at the very beginning of the game, like you said, there's a bunch of drowned people and, and Vegeta comes up to you and goes, Hey, you want to see something funny? And he shows you what the dead, you want to see a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think a lot of people can really enjoy this game. I mean, if you're looking for an open world adventure type game with more of like a linear story, but you can still like go out and explore things, you'd, you'd have fun with this. Uh, just anything, you, really, the hard recommendation would be for looking for something that's Minecraft adjacent. I think you would enjoy this. Yeah. Um, I would say if you want uh, a JRPG light casual uh, adventure, play it. If you like the Dragon Quest series, play it. If you like a Kira Toriyama mm -hmm. designed games, play it. <laughs> Um, if you like Minecraft style games, survival games, crafting games, even though this is a lighter version of that and a lot more casual, um, you might still find fun in it because it does carry over a lot of those systems into it. Um, I said JRPGs, 
Um, if you like Zelda, it does definitely have kind of a Zelda 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 combat vibe. Eight to sixteen bit era. Yeah, the older yeah. Zelda, not yeah, the newer yeah. ones. Um, we're just kind of running up top down, slicing bushes up and shit. Mm. Um, if you like micromanaging in games, if you like uh, building up towns, if you like like Sim City type games, you might dig this because you're kind of building up a town and taking requests from people and trying to keep them happy. There's there's a system where they they you know give you hearts every time you do something good, and that builds up your town. Uh, it has uh, um, um, kind of like levels to the town as it as it goes up. So uh, there's a reward factor there. It's currency um, in the Island of Awakening. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, there's other things I think I could recommend, but do you got anything to add to that? I mean, I think you pretty much got it. I mean, it's a third-person action game with RPG elements. The level cap is you obtain it very, very fast. Um, I'm max level already in the game, which I think is 10. Um, so you're not going to get a lot of RPG in that regard, but you will a lot more in the the way like dialogue and interactions with people yeah. work. Um, mm-hmm. It is definitely like a, a, a third person action game with building uh, uh, elements to it, though. But it's not extreme in either way. Like you keep saying, it's a very light version. If that sounds appealing to you, um, I can promise you it's really easy to just play this game. Mm-hmm. It's not too complicated. Um, but it does offer enough that like you, you can put yourself in a bad position fighting things if you decide to fight too many things at once or you don't have the right equipment on or whatever reason. So. I think if someone's not opposed to action, I think people who enjoy Animal Crossing might, li- might like this game as well. Um, oh, yeah. It's not the exact same, but it does have a vibe of that, um, specifically in its multiplayer, where you can have people come and just check out your island, essentially. But uh, you are making your own place. You are um, you know, playing the game and earning new things to build and make and use, um, different outfits, not to the same extent of Animal Finding Crossing. Finding villagers for the island of Finding Awakening. Finding villagers. So yeah. I do feel like if you enjoy Animal Crossing and you don't mind fighting uh monsters and boss stuff like that um you probably enjoy this i think you would i think that's one reason why you dig it so much i think a lot of people would enjoy it i i just don't think they've done a good job of advertising it to people to be honest i no, so i'm sure it sells they, well enough, they but. advertise this to people who like dragon quest mm-hmm. that's it and i'm yeah, like it's kind you, of you understand you can get more people like even people who play the lego games i would say check this game out it's not an adventure game like that but it does have a similar like, oh, collect everything and break everything open and grab stuff, and it's and it's casual enough to feel like that outside of you know fighting certain bosses, which are just you know get the right equipment, you can go fight them later. But um, you know, combat's not super stressful. A lot of times, you're just in a crowd of people, and there's other NPCs on your team in that crowd, and everybody's just swinging and like. He has a mosh pit. It's more like an event is happening than like a hard fight is going on. He yeah, really the only thing that that. Um... I think might be deterrent is when you build stuff, it can be destroyed by the the enemies. Yeah. And that can be disheartening for some people. Um, Yeah. But you're not working as hard to get those items to craft as like another game. But yeah, it is. That's a huge deterrent. Like in Conan, like you can turn on the, uh, not thralls or the hell the, the, is it thralls? Fucking people who invade and attack your building I'll shit. I'll say there's an event. And I'm like, I'm yeah. not, I don't want that on on my surfer just because, like, I'm building a lot. I don't want any of it getting destroyed. Like, if someone comes in here and breaks the shit, I'm, I'm getting the fuck rid of you. Like, I'm not, I'm not dealing with that shit. So, um, but in a game like this, I, that's why I have a different mentality playing it. I don't even destroy that much. It is kind of annoying, though, because it'll pop a block out there and a block over here is missing now. And I'm sitting there like, God damn it. Like, just fixing yeah, my, things. My rice field was on the side that they wanted to not rice tomatoes sorry uh was on the side that they wanted to uh, invade from and those have to have canals of water so they break the side of the wall and all my water just go like, yep that happened to me too <laughs> i didn't think about it and then they came over and started just breaking the wall right next to i forgot what it was it, it's in water mm-hmm. what is what grows in the water so, tomatoes and sugar yeah, sugar. Um, sugar cane was growing in there, and like they just came over, were attacking the wall, and busted open the side, and water just went everywhere. I'm like, God damn it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Got water fucking everywhere. Yeah, so that might be a little bit of a deterrent if you, if you don't want to clean up. Um, but I mean, at the same time, it is make a better defense as well. So. Yeah, yeah. Just got to adapt. More walls. Yeah. yeah, you can stop it. Just you got to think about it. Yeah. But otherwise, I think we pretty much covered everything I would recommend. So, me too. Uh, Chevy, great. I'm gonna give it an A minus. 
<laughs> I do think it is a very good game. I have very little complaints about it other than the multiplayer is a time sink to get to. Um, it has enough Minecraft qualities to let people be creative. In fact, the loading screens show off people's creations, which I think is I like awesome. That, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you can also find those creations in the the this the, the the little randomly generated islands you can do scavenger hunts on also puts random buildings someone made and a couple of villagers of their or npcs based Which is off a cool it. community aspect yeah so you can find people structures check them out uh people have some time on their hands let me tell you oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then you you find random villagers to take back and stuff so i don't know this is there's just a lot to do um and it's not never like stressful to do i don't know it's it it's it's an awesome game I recommend it to a lot of people. So, yeah, definitely, Chris. Uh, I'm gonna give it a B plus. Um, it's a really fun game overall, but it's it's kind of like this weird merger for me of the JRPG Minecraft esque genre, where it's not quite scratching the itch one way or the other too much. Mm. Um, and I would really, really like a better multiplayer system. Just being able to access it even earlier on, and you know, from what I've heard, can't completely speak for this firsthand but be able to play with other people on like a community-based island instead of just like hey this is my stuff look at it straight up fucking i think that when they make the next game they should make it so the person can play with you through the story through the whole game mm -hmm. that'd be i mean that, that'd be the perfect multiplayer for that yeah. game and with up to four mm -hmm. people would be, be awesome mm -hmm. scale the monsters Please. make their health yeah. bigger and damage a little higher depending on how many people you have and people drop out off lower it let them drop in and out. Let them keep their progress on the island. Let them have their own little boxes. They can all keep their own shit in there, and their inventory is individual. And uh, if they go play their own game, that's the tricky part. Maybe just based on saves, because it'd be kind of weird if you played on my game, got a bunch of cool stuff, then went back to your game, started it, and so maybe just by game co-op per save. But it's completely doable, and they could. It wouldn't change the story. The story is typically people just stand there talking. And like your characters just stand there, and there's already NPCs hanging out anyway when it yeah. happens. So just uh, make it so there's a circle around the NPC that has an important story arc, and then everyone who's playing needs to be standing in that circle, and someone has to initiate it. Be perfect. That's what I want. In case whoever the fuck made this game is listening to this channel for some reason, I just gave you an awesome <laughs> idea. You can have it. Just uh, tell people about my channel. That's it. That's all I want. Fair trade. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So B plus, A minus. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else to say on that? No, no. But uh, but yeah, I, I I just want I just want a multiplayer that you can be excited about. I'm sure it's fine. I just want something that you, you can go like, fuck yeah, this is exactly what I wanted. Um, I'm gonna also give this a B plus. I was kind of dancing between B and B plus. Um, I do. The the B mentality is is it does everything. I mean B's better than C. It's, it's excels. It's, it's a fun game. It stands on its own. Um, but I want to give it the plus just because they did outside of the multiplayer, make a better game than the last game. Um, I liked the first one. I didn't love it. I played this and I don't necessarily love this game, but I do like it quite a bit. Um, but I feel like it excels in everything that I wanted from the first game. So it's a good step forward. Um, and so, yeah, I really enjoy it. And, and above that, I look forward to the next game. I want the next game in the series whenever they make that. So um, I kind of have to give it a higher grade for that. But it's it's a fun game. It's uh, charming. Fucking help me during some fucking shitty week. Um, and uh, yeah, I just I, I I'm slowly just becoming like, well, Dragon Quest Eleven did it to me. But uh, I've I've become a Dragon Quest fan. So at this point, um, anytime anything that they do comes out, I'm just like, oh shit, I want that. So um, and this game doesn't. Um, doesn't betray that it's uh it, it has all the charm that i want it has the gameplay that i think is simple yet you know um, um engaging and uh the building aspects um are uh are different for me because like i said before the games like this i typically just want to build 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 in this game it's structured in a different way that i'm like i, w I will build I'm not opposed to it, but there's other things to do as well. And I kind of like that. Um, so yeah, overall it's a great game and it's hard to compare it to another game. I can't think of another game. Like you can kind of compare elements of it to other games. It is very but unique it, though, but it, it, it's kind of its own game. Like yeah. I remember when the first game was coming out, I'm like, Oh, they're making, they're just making Minecraft, but with dragon quest characters, that'll sell it. That's smart. And then, you know, I play it. I'm like, Oh no, no, they, they're making like, a, this is an RPG for yeah. sure. 
Yeah, that was a big surprise for me on the first game. They're just uh, flirting with the Minecraft stuff. Yeah, it's just a gameplay element yeah. for their story. <laughs> exactly. So. Yeah. I think it's smart, and uh, it doesn't have competition, and it does what it does well. So, yeah, B+. Plus. Yeah. And get it in more people's hands. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. Um, we have uh, somebody in the community who started playing it this month, too. Hopefully, we hear from you in the comments about your opinion on it and grade, uh, if you want to give that. But uh, he seems stoked about it, too. He started playing. He's like, oh, I love this. I'm like, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. So I, I feel like a lot of people would like this game. But I also feel like a lot of people didn't play this game. I feel like most people I know probably didn't play this game. Probably. So. Which is a bummer. Anything else you guys want to say? Uh, what are we playing next month again? Earth Defense vs. 5. Looking yeah, forward to I already that. forgot too. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely going to play it. Uh, yeah, next month is going to be easy, but also fun, which I'm excited about because literally every all the three games that we're obligated to play are all games I enjoy. So that's that's nice. Um, but obviously come back and find out our grades on those and impressions. I'm really curious about Modern Warfare 2 uh, remaster because I haven't played that. And somebody on Reddit was saying that they did a really good job with the remaster graphically. Chris will love it. Chris will love it. Chris is going to love it. Gonna Chris, try to, try to get him to play Fall Guys. He's like, hold on, I'm shooting bitches. Yeah. <laughs> that campaign's only six hours. You should try and beat it. It's real short. Mm -hmm. It's got some fucking. It's, it's got really good story. some incredible scenes, man. I there's some parts of the game I'm just like, damn, this is fucking good. And that's weird to say about Call of Duty because Call of Duty's just become what it is now, and I like it. it's fun. But like back in the day, I'm like, man, these guys are fucking good at what they do. They were like the naughty dog of first person shooters, and then they weren't. So, um, yeah, let us know in the comments what you guys think of Dragon Quest Builders Two. Did you play it? Did you not play it? Why didn't you play it? Are you gonna uh, play it? Are you gonna play it? Now, based off our recommendations, you should. Uh, if you did play it, what'd you like about it? What didn't you like about it? Do you like that it, do you agree first off that it's more JRPG centric than Minecraft centric, builder centric? Uh, and do you like that? Or do you, would you like, to, you know, a little bit more uh, of the building aspect, the more sandbox? Did you play the multiplayer? Did you like the multiplayer? And um, yeah, do you like the Dragon Quest series? What's your favorite one if you're a big fan? And uh, let me know everything you're thinking about in the comments below when it comes to Dragon Quest Builders 2. That's going to do it for this episode of Game of the Month. As always, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this episode. Make sure to check out our other episodes. Check us out on Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. At, and TikTok's fucking probably going to get taken down. We talked about that last time. That seems like they're getting ready to fucking put the axe on that thing. Um, this is not, obviously for a long version but microsoft's considering buying the they're US considering section they're of it. they're considering buying it but the government's also saying that they just want to get rid of it because there's like three countries that have already gotten rid of it i think it's japan india uh canada has done a couple things when it comes to it and mm -hmm. uh biden's whole fucking um um what the fuck is the word people who work for him he's told them all they got to get off tiktok so um it's a big deal interesting yeah it's it's very interesting so soon i won't be saying that shit so you better check it out right now um unless it stays around then just make sure to follow me um we have discord link down below you can talk to us anytime all the time we're on itunes spotify and other podcast platforms if you prefer to listen to us my name's seth i'm chevy and i'm chris until next episode which should be tasty tuesday uh i think have a good weekend guys and take it easy